folks, Andrew Bopros here. I want to talk a little about uh, trade deadline. Tom Telesco, no moves. Actually, we waived a player in Trey McKitty at the trade deadline. So, guys, let's get into it. Bull Bros. Okay, folks, as always, like and subscribe if you do enjoy the content. I'm Andrew Bull Bros. So, no trades. I know everyone's pretty upset about that and a lot of people really wanted to see us go after you know a corner maybe a wide receiver look at the end of the day that's not happening but we're kind of seeing a pattern and a theme so i want to talk about trey mckitty and i'm going to talk about how that's going to potentially affect the team or give us an insight in how brandon staley and tom telesco are going to potentially manage a team moving forward because it does say a lot right i do i can tell uh there is a pattern uh or or a method to the madness if you will Again, Brandon Staley, one of the things I have liked about him is he is very good at recognizing talent. I'm going to talk quite a bit about that. Uh, so, again, no major trades, no nothing. And, again, you have to remember, too, next year we have a ton of money, uh, you know, popping up that, you know, Tom's got a lot of work to do moving dollars around to make things work for the salary cap next year. So we're a little strapped. No major players we could probably go after or really afford for that matter. So the argument is, hey, we just got to you know deal with what we're getting in house. But again, here's the man of the hour, uh, Trey McKitty. Trey McKitty really was a bit of a bust. I know he, you know, a lot of people pretty frustrated with him. I myself included were a bit frustrated. And you know, Tom Pelissero was the one that broke this, the news. Uh, he was uh, third round of the 2021 draft. Again, Josh Palmer was drafted in that. He's from Georgia. They expected him to be very good blocking tight end. Never really did well as a blocking tight end. Um, again, Tom Telesco, when they drafted him, said he was really the last pro ready tight end um, uh, on the board at that time. And that's why they went after him. Again, one of the things uh, really about, uh, you know, Kellen Moore's offense is they really feature a lot of tight ends. And they have to be very athletic. But again, he never really was a good wide receiver, other wide receiver. He wasn't really good at catching the ball. McKitty also started with penalties. Um, he recorded six in 2022 and was tied for second most for the Chargers. He also, in his final game with the Chargers, and this might have been the, the nail in the coffin, uh, he called uh, was called for holding penny on a fourth and one and forced a turnover on downs late in the team over the Bears. And again, Parham balled out, right? So it's like, well, we got Everett, we got Parham. You know, They really like Stone Smart. He was a converted quarterback. So you just didn't really need the guy. And, and it's unfortunate, right? Because I, I really think Trey McKitty you know, could have been very good, but he just never really made it work with the Chargers. So I'm very curious to see where he lands. I promise you he'll land somewhere. But, you know, it's it's been an interesting situation. If you start looking at some of these different draft classes as well, too, you know, um, Trey Pipkins and Easton Sick are the only two from the 2019 draft class. Again, Herbert was a huge, amazing player out of 2020. Kenneth Murray, kind of been a bit of a disappointment in the 2020 draft, but he's playing great right now. Again, 2021, Rashawn Slater, incredible. Asante Samuel, incredible. Josh Palmer, incredible. So, you know, it's 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 really interesting seeing, you know, how this has played out. And again, a lot of people are going to go back and say, well, you know, Tom does a really bad job of assessing talent, yada, yada. But let's discuss really how this affects the team and what might happen. Now we have an open 53-man roster uh, spot. So what that'll probably mean is most likely Jalen Guyton will play. Or this man right here, Tito Obonia, both are available um, or at least have the ability to come back and play currently. So one of those two people will probably take that spot. Now, the other the other thought could be that we could recall uh, Nick Vanette. Um, again, I don't even have a charger photo of him yet, but he's on the practice squad. We most likely will elevate him um, and then, uh, you know, potentially use him or we just bring up Tito and um uh, and or Jalen Guyton. If I had to guess, I would probably say Jalen Guyton, largely because we don't really need um, another tight end. We've had no injuries, and really Jared Everett most likely will be back next week. Uh, you know when we play the Jets for Monday Night Football. So I don't know that he'll come up, but I do think Jalen Guyton probably will take that spot. You never know though. So we'll we'll keep you posted on the injury report and kind of how this conversation plays out. But to wrap up, let's just show you. He's a great example of how I do think this Charger team right now, being as cash-strapped as we are, is going to be building the team moving forward. And it's through waiver wires. We picked him up through waivers. 
We picked up D Marlowe through waivers and D Marlowe has been great guys. He has been an awesome special teams player and also an awesome safety as, as a backup. He's just been terrific guys. So look, there's value out there. And there's other guy, this other guy right here. And here's my last one. Isang Basie, right. That we got from, I believe the Broncos, the Broncos released him and we picked him up. And the thing about him, you know, he was a, 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 a preseason standout for the, um, for the for the Broncos, they released him. We picked him up, and guys, Esang actually stopped the two point conversion uh, from the Bears uh, last week. So, you know, we're finding value. People that we can bring in, add depth. Not going to be a huge signing. Not going to be a huge step up. That's actually why we do a lot of videos on waiver wire pickups, practice squad signings. So these these people can come up and make plays. Again, Nick Van Ant might be the guy. So we'll see how that plays out. As always, guys, Andrew Bopros, see you guys in the next one.